Hey everyone, this is Narval Central coming back at you with another YouTube video. And I just want to thank everyone for all the love and the support on my YouTube videos as of late. I'm about 60 subscribers away from 1,000, so that's really impressive to see. And hopefully more people can uh, kind of come on, on board to the content and hopefully everybody can kind of enjoy it. But I really appreciate all the love and support and it really does mean a lot to me. But I just want to go ahead and start off the video of why I was making it today is just going to be doing a projected depth chart. This is somebody's favorite time of the year. I mean, when you really look at it, um, I could go back in August after this video is being posted and really look at this and say, wow, I was completely off with some of these positions. But I'm going to try to do my best in terms of trying to get the appropriate depth chart out there for everyone to see. Um, just based off of my observations that I saw last Saturday while observa uh, observing practice, and also kind of getting certain things there. So I'm really excited to see how this team is going to go out. And I'm not necessarily going to uh, basically um, really clamor for eight or nine wins, but I will say this team is much improved, especially the depth on both sides of the ball. Um, on offense, uh, we are returning nine offensive starters this season, so it's going to be really impressive to see what's going to happen. The most important position on the field this season is going to be quarterback, and I think that's going to be led by Jordan Travis. I think the backup role is a little bit different because you have Tate Rodemaker and also A.J. Duffy. I think Rodemaker is going to make those strides to be the backup quarterback, and this is exactly what you want. I know a lot of fans are really criticizing him from last season because he really struggled in certain aspects, and he was really trying to get acclimated to the collegiate game. And I really think he's going to take a lot of strides this offseason. And you even saw it in the press conference yesterday with Mike Norvell, and he was just talking about the, you know, just basically the improvements that he's seen from Tate and how accurate he's been with the football, how decisive he's been, how comfortable he's getting in the offense. And I think that's really going to pay dividends there. You also got to think about A.J. Duffy as well. And uh, when I was observing practice on Saturday, you know, there was a lot of seam throws that he was making, a lot of confident throws that you haven't seen a Florida State quarterback make in quite some time but he is a true freshman, and that's going to be taking some time to get used to. And even Jameis Whitson, a, Heisman, a former Heisman Trophy winner, he actually started as a redshirt freshman. So he had two years of experience by that time, and that's going to be really important for him going into his first year of learning and developing. And hopefully when Chris Parson is able to come in and hopefully commit to this program and sign, you know, they'll have that competition going for there. And, you know, Duffy can be able to, you know, push for that starting role. But as of right now, I see it being Jordan Travis and Tate Rodemaker, unless they bring in a transfer quarterback, which could be possible uh, with only three scholarship quarterbacks. But I really do think that that's going to be the depth chart going forward with quarterback position. As for the running back position, this is a little bit different because a lot of people were really criticizing the Trey Benson pickup from Oregon because of his injury. But I will say that by August – the time August comes around, he's going to be two years removed almost from that knee injury that he had where he suffered a couple of ligament tears. And you really saw there was a lot of quickness and explosiveness. And I think Treshawn Ward is going to be the starter at running back. But I do think it's going to be kind of a running mate situation as Trey Benson is probably going to have that number two running back spot barely. I, I really do think that I like the idea of Benson being able to be that one-two punch I think it's going to be a running back by committee. And you saw what Treshawn Ward last season. He had about 18 carries for 75 yards in the past five games. And he really saw that energy that he had early on in the season where he was getting six yards a carry. And it basically diminished to 3.4 yards per carry later in the season. You really saw the, the end of the season really taking a toll on him. So I'm hoping that Trey Benson can come in there, kind of push him, and be able to have both of those complement each other very, very well. At the tailback position, Mike Norvell loves this tailback position. It's more of a running back out of the backfield and also running back in the slot receiver uh, role there. I think that's going to be Lawrence Sofili. I think he's going to take another step this season as being an effective weapon out of the slot. I also think Ja'Kai Douglas, even though he's working with the wide receivers, I do think he's going to be that second tailback that they're going to be able to utilize. And then we'll go ahead and go to the wide receiver position. This is a position that everybody wants to talk about because of the position as the last couple of years, you know, last season it was absolutely dreadful for this position. They really couldn't create any separation, and you really didn't see anybody standing out. I mean, the leading receiver, I think, was – it was I think it was Pokey last season. He had like 300 yards and like two touchdowns. I, it wasn't very impressive. So, when you look at the roster this season, they brought in four transfer wide receivers and Johnny Wilson, uh, Winston Wright Jr., Deuce Spann, Micah Pittman – 
you know, those guys are really, really game changers. And I think you've really seen this wide receiver room really, really try to step up because all of those transfer wide receivers were brought in. Maybe because that's only why we only brought zero wide receivers in for this last recruiting cycle. But I do think that this wide receiver bunch that we have of transfers are really going to be able to push this room. On the outside, I think it's going to be Malik McLean. I think he's going to be efficient in what he does. I think his main downside was basically route running, but I do think he takes a big step forward this season. I think on the other outside receiver spot, I think it's going to be Johnny Wilson. You've seen him throughout spring practice so far, and he has been catching 50-50 balls, contested catches, winning those one-on-one opportunities every single time with his 6'7", 230-pound frame. I really think it's going to be important for him. I do think it's going to be a slight – for maybe the first reserve on the outside receiver, I think it's going to be Micah Pittman. I think that's going to be the difference maker there. I think he's still going to have a ton of playing time, so I wouldn't really put too much into the reserve spot for him. I also think Ontario Wilson is going to be another guy on the outside that I think you're going to have to lean on with experience. On the slot side of things, I think it's going to be Winston Wright. I know we haven't heard a lot of him out of the spring. I think he's still getting adjusted to it. And there was also a media session that Ron Dukins had with some of the media members at Florida State And he was talking about how when he was playing in that Big 12 offense, there was a lot of opportunities for him in zone, but they never really played man in that conference. So he was still kind of getting used to everything with with man coverage. And you could really see that Winston Wright is still trying to learn that aspect of everything. But I do think he's going to be effective special teams as well as a kickoff returner. So that's going to be really important for him. And in terms of the backup slot receiver, this is where I kind of went back and forth with a lot of things, but I do think the experience is going to play out here, and I think it's going to be Keyshawn Hilton. I know we've heard this name a lot. I know he's been around Florida State for a very long time. He's a redshirt senior at this point, and he's got to be able to step up, but I do think he's going to take those necessary steps forward as a leader on this team. Next is we got the tight end position. Mike Norvell loves tight ends. They've got seven scholarship tight ends on the roster, so – somebody has to step up behind Cam McDonald, the unquestioned uh, starter. And I think it's going to be Jackson West and Marquise and Douglas kind of taking that backup role as a committee approach. I really do think that that's going to be their options going forward. I thought Preston Daniel could take a step forward, but he just hasn't really impressed so far in spring. Now, he could do terribly in spring and turn out to be really well in summer. We never know. But I'm just thinking, as of my projected depth chart right now, I think that Jackson West and Marquise and Douglas are going to be those two that step up. Now, in the goal line situations as a backup tight end, I could see Wyatt Rector because he's been very, very successful in those kind of roles. And I think he could be very successful going forward for this offense. So I think it's going to be maybe a four tight end committee approach there. And I think it could be something special there. At the left tackle position, I have Robert Scott. He is a first uh, projected first round pick in some mock NFL drafts. So that's really going to be impressive. I think they had him going 23rd to the Bengals. So hopefully this is going to be a probate year for him. I think he's got all the tools as a a tackle prospect and we'll see how it goes. Uh, Doing Gibbons at left guard. I think that's going to be very impressive there. Caden Wiles, uh, the center transfer from Wisconsin. I think it's going to be very good. Um, I think Darius Washington is going to be able to go at that right guard spot. I think they're going to be able to slide him in because I think Bless Harris is going to be taking over that right tackle position. But I think it's going to be a very, very close battle between him and Lloyd Willis. I think that's going to be the biggest factor there. Um, Rod Orr is also in consideration there at the reserve spot. I think Brian Estes, uh, Bryson Estes is going to be a big uh, factor there. I also think Thomas Schrader is going to be a big reserve. And Murray Smith could be a big reserve as well, but he's still got to get that weight up. And I, I think there's going to have to be something done there. Um, maybe even a guy like Quayshon Sapp, but I know he's a summer enrollee. You got guys like Dalton Richardson and uh, Antavius Woody and also some of those other guys as well. So we'll definitely see. Kanaya Charlton is another guy that I thought of as well. Um, maybe even a Julian Armella. I mean, that could be a factor. But – you know, they're all coming in the summer, so that's going to be really big to see how they're going to develop over the summer, and it's going to be really hard for true freshmen to really step up. Overall, I like the offensive side of the ball. I think we're going to be very efficient in what we do, and I think it's going to be huge for Jordan Travis to have a lot of those wide receivers and those offensive linemen because he's got to stay healthy this season in terms of being able to get Florida State to that next level of winning seven or eight games. On the defensive side of the ball, we also return nine starters as well, so that's very encouraging. But the problem is, is the starters that we did lose, which are Jermaine Johnson and also Keir Thomas. So that's going to be very big to see how, we ab- how we're able to kind of respond from that and see if there's going to be anything there. 
At the defensive end position, I think it's going to be Jared Verse, uh, the Albany transfer that we had, redshirt freshman. I think he's going to take that next step forward. I'm not saying that he's like Jermaine Johnson, but I think he could hold that Kira Thomas role where he's able to get six sacks this season. I think that could be very impressive for him. At the defensive tackle position, I have Fabian Lovett, and I, that goes without questioning. I think he's going to be one of the best uh, defenders this season. Also, at the nose tackle position, I have Robert Cooper. Both of those guys actually stated that they were going to be returning for their, for their respective seasons, and I really do think that that's going to be big for Florida State going forward, especially the interior. I think it's going to take a lot of pressure off of Jared Burst and those other pass rushers that we have. Um, at the Fox position, position, I have Dennis Briggs. I think Dennis Briggs has kind of switched over from that defensive tackle position to the defensive end position, and I think it's going to be very important for him to – be able to fight over that injury that he suffered over that chop block against Louisville. And I think it's going to be very impressive to see how he responds to those adversities. And as the defensive end backup, I have Quayshon Fuller, and I also have Derek McClendon backing up at the Fox position. I think both of those guys are really going to have to take a step forward, and I think it could be a factor in what they do, but we'll definitely see. One guy I'm super excited about at the nose tackle position is Malcolm Ray. I think he's going to take that next step forward, and I think he could be a viable piece in this defense. Then you look at the defensive tackle position. I went back and forth with Jared Jackson and Joshua Farmer, but I edged out Joshua Farmer because I do think that he is getting up to effective weight now. He's up to about 310 now, and I think he's really switching from that defensive end spot where he was about 255 to now up to 310. So that is a remarkable change. And it's not even bad weight that he's putting on. I think he's really getting adjusted to everything that's going on so far. Uh, speaking about getting up in weight, this is the exact opposite with, with DJ Lundy. I think he's going to be the stud uh, starting linebacker. He went from about 255 pounds to about 230, 235. So that's really impressive to see that, that weight decrease. And now he's able to kind of get more in coverage He's a little bit quicker. You can see a little bit quicker in his feet, a lot more confidence to his game. I think Amari Gaynor is going to be backing him up right now. I just don't know what this staff wants to do with him just yet. I think he's a tweener between a defensive end and a linebacker, and you really don't know what you got in him yet. I really do think he's a talented player, and I think he's going to play a lot, but I'm just questioning to see what is the next plan for him. At the uh, Mike linebacker position, I think it's going to be Tatum Bethune. I, I definitely think that this is the, one of the biggest pickups that Florida State's had, especially at that linebacker position where there was some question marks. And we only were able to sign uh, one linebacker signee in uh, Omar Graham Jr. I think he's very talented, but I think he's going to have some years to kind of develop. And maybe he might play during a sophomore year, but I don't know what to expect from him from his true freshman year. I think backing up Bethune, I think it's going to be Stephen Dix. I think this is going to have to be a prove-it year for him. I think it's going to have to be – uh, something memorable for him to be able to stick through the rotation, but we'll definitely see. Um, at the Will linebacker position, I have Taylor with Deloche, and I think he's going to be a viable part to this defense. He was a leading, one of the leading tacklers last season, and I think he could be the reason why this linebacker unit is one of the best since 2014, and that's a big statement. Um, Brendan Gant, I have backing him up. It's, it's kind of a position change. You're trying to figure out what you got in this redshirt junior defensive back that flipped over to linebacker and hopefully he is going to be a viable piece in this defense, but we'll definitely see. I think Omar Graham can push there as well, um, but maybe we'll, uh, we'll see about that unit. But overall, I like the uh, three starting linebackers that I have projected and also the one quality reserve in Amari Gaynor, and then you're trying to see what you got in Dix Jr., Brendan Gant, and also Omar Graham Jr. as well. At the boundary corner, I have Omer and Cooper. I think he's going to be a viable piece. He really come on last season – really late in the season after they uh, decided to put him on. And then you got backing him up. I think Jerry and Jones is going to take that next step forward. Injuries have always been an issue with him and consistency. Being able to uh, attack in man coverage, he's doing pretty well attacking uh, downhill and run support, but you want to see more from him in man coverage there. Um, at the, uh, the other spot, the field corner position, I think it's going to be Jarvis Brownlee. Now, I know he's had some issues, whether, uh, whether it be throughout this offseason – um, I just want to clear the record straight. It's not NIL related. Um, I was actually told from a couple of his teammates and everything. I just want to keep the uh, situation kind of private for him. I want to give him as much respect as he needs um, throughout this time that he has. Um, I know that a lot of people are speculating through Twitter and uh, kind of giving him a bad rap, but you have to understand that he is a student athlete, and I just want to give him and his family enough respect as it pertains to his game. But if he does not return and 
and something does happen or, or something does go wrong, I think Azariah Thomas is going to be that guy that steps in and, and kind of fills the starting role for him. And I even thought that Azariah Thomas could be that guy that could start later in the season. So that's going to be very impressive to see uh, how he develops. He's done really, really well in acclimating to his game. He's about 6'2", 187. Uh, can play cornerback or safety. I prefer him to be at cornerback. I really think he's going to be a viable weapon this season, and I think he could be pushing for that starting spot, especially if Brownlee has some issues and doesn't really able to go there. But I want to give Brownlee some respect, and hopefully he can uh, be able to get through there because we all want to see Florida State do successful on the field, players, coaches, staff, everything. So um, the next spot is the nickel cornerback position at Kevin Knowles. I think he's going to be a viable piece there, about 5'11", super aggressive corner there. Uh, they really like what they see in Kevin Knowles. Uh, another guy I'm very intrigued to see as the backup is Greedy Vance. Um, I think Greedy Vance is going to be that guy to step up, and I think he's going to play efficiently. I, and really, if you're looking at these uh, cornerback and safety position spots, um, I really think a lot of these guys are really going to play a ton. I think they're going to – really have an effective weapon at all kind of cornerback and safety positions. And I think there's going to be a lot of guys that play. I think they're going to run a lot of four two five just like they did last season. So I wouldn't really put into depth about the reserves because I do think they're going to play a ton. At the uh, bug position, I do think it's going to be a keen dent. I think you really come on the last three games of the season. But the thing is, is there's a lot of competition on this team, like I had said before. And I think Sam McCall is going to be the one backing him up. And I think that's going to do wonders for him. I think that's going to bring a lot of competition to that room. And I think it's going to really build a lot of competition and just trying to focus on more of his skill set in general. So I'm really excited to see Sam McCall. I think he's got all the tools, but I don't necessarily think he's going to play right away. I think he's going to be more of a special team player, and I'll get into that in just a second. Um, but I do think that there's going to be some good pieces there. Um, at the free safety position, it goes without questioning. I think it's going to be Jamie Robinson. Uh, that is one of the positions that I think it's going to be very stable for Florida State going forward. And I think Robinson has, Robinson has all the tools to be very, very successful in everything that he does. Uh, backing him up, I think it's going to be Sidney Williams. I think that's going to be a viable piece there. Um, I think Sidney Williams showed some flashes last season, but he couldn't stay healthy. I think that he stays healthy this season and is able to back up Robinson. So we'll definitely see about that. At the uh, kicker position, I think it's going to be Ryan Fitzgerald. I think that goes to that questioning. I think he went 10 for 13 last season. Had a couple of missed extra points. You're wanting to see more confidence out of him, and I think you might actually see it. The, at the uh, punter position, I think it's going to be Alex Mastromano. I think that's going to go without questioning. He's really the only uh, viable punter that we have on the roster, other than a couple of preferred walk-ons. But I do think Alex is going to do a tremendous job. Hopefully we don't see him on the field a ton. But, you know, punting goes without saying. Sometimes you want to, uh, you know, rule field position right there, and hopefully he's able to really do that this season. Uh, then you go to the kickoff returners. So my thought process is it's probably going to be a combination of Winston Wright Jr. Then I think you're going to see Sam McCall. I think he's going to be utilized on either that or the punt returns, um, and maybe even Ontario Wilson. But – I think those two that I mentioned before, I think are going to be the kickoff return specialist. Um, and you've even looked at Winston Wright Jr. He's really been an effective kickoff returner during his time at West Virginia. And I think he's going to be an effective piece now. Um, at the punt return situation, I think it's going to be Micah Pittman. He's really done a great job in being able to uh, punt, uh, return very well. And you even saw David Johnson with some of his water gun tactics to really get them focused on everything that's going on. And Florida State staff was very impressive to see with certain aspects of everything going on. And Micah Pittman was able to really catch the punt and attack head on. It wasn't a fact of them bobbling fair catches and, and stuff like that that you saw last season. Those special teams blunders really affected the whole team in general. And I really think that he is going to take that next step forward to really changing this defense and, and what they do going forward with that. So that is my projected depth chart. And I really hope each and every one of you enjoyed everything that I've talked about today. I really tried to go in depth with some of these positions and trying to give you a better understanding on to why I think this. But if you have any changes that you think I should make on the projected depth chart, 
and some that you know may surprise you or any players that you think are going to really emerge this season, just let me know in those comments. I really like reading all the comments, and I try to respond as many as I can. And as always, I really love um, everyone watching the video and really supporting me at a high level. Um, I really do appreciate everybody for that support, and I cannot thank you enough for everything. But as always, go Knowles. <laughs> <laughs>